Welcome to What Is Going On in the UC, and today we're going to talk about identity again. Now, why do we have to talk about identity? Well, if there were no fall, we wouldn't have to talk about identity because the world we'd be in is a good world. The families that we'd be in are good families, and we'd probably be good people. In a fallen world where people are trying to get themselves out of this matrix, you have to have some reason to believe that, that your efforts to separate from all that you feel is bad is actually working. Now, this means you have to distinguish self, and you have to align self with something good. If there were no fall, we wouldn't have a pesky Satan inside of our head telling us that we are hopelessly attached to him, attached to his motives, attached to his world, and attached to everything that he does. Because it's a very disempowering thing to feel that you are attached to inevitable evil. Now, with all this growth that we have to go through to understand ourselves as God's partners, growing on multiple levels to ultimately become God's complete partner, there are bumps because of the existence of Satan. If there was no Satan, we would just listen to our conscience, and our conscience would guide us through the aforementioned three stages and guide us safely to the greatest moment of filial piety when we receive the blessing from our parents and God. But the problem is that our conscience is under assault because of the fallen world. And that is why this whole issue of identity is not happening in a seamless way. Our consciences are buried in the doubt because of the garbage coming out of Satan's mouth all the time. It is as if our conscience, which is like a radio station somewhere within our spirit, broadcasting its prescriptions, cannot be heard. Now, why can't the conscience be heard? Because Satan casts a certain kind of doubt on the voice of the conscience. Now, if you've ever driven by a power station while you were listening to the radio, the electromagnetic interference coming from the power station sometimes disrupts the radio signal and you cannot hear it. And Satan has the same kind of effect on your ability to hear your conscience. And brothers and sisters, this is where identity becomes very, very important. If your conscience was making a serious suggestion for you to do something that would be good, how are you going to do that good thing if, for all intents and purposes, you cannot hear the voice of that conscience? Or how are you going to do that good thing if three or four other voices in your mind are discrediting that voice of conscience? In many ways, the voice of doubt comes aggressively from the satanic world, from Satan. You see, the way this identity thing goes, you don't have to be purposefully bad to be Satan's child. You just have to thoroughly doubt the voice of your conscience in order to qualify as Satan's child. Because what is Satan? The original doubter of God. Because God is good, if you live by conscience and if we all live by conscience, undoubtedly, we would have a good world. So being a child of God eventually becomes a matter of doing the good that our conscience would have us do. And since the conscience is geared towards the kingdom, it means doing the kingdom friendly thing. The problem is we live in that interference reality. We live in that reality where we have to have a reason to cling to our conscience. And that reason is our identity. So when your conscience speaks up and Satan tries to chime in with some doubt to override the voice of conscience, it is your identity that helps you to kick his butt. Many times Satan says, who are you to think that this good act that you want to perform is going to matter? That goodness is going to be increased because of it. How dare you? Who are you to think that? Maybe Satan will say that to you. Maybe Satan will say, you're just doing that good act to look good. You're actually very selfish. You're just like me. You hear these things and then sometimes you wind up not performing the act because you think, oh, actually, it's a satanic thing I was about to do. The very conscientious thing that you were about to do, you start thinking it was a satanic idea. <laughs> or the very conscientious thing that you were about to do, you start to think is going to be impotent. Or sometimes Satan says, you know, if you perform that act, it's going to hurt you. If you give money, you're going to have less money. If you give money to that old woman on the corner, you're not going to have any money. And in that case, that very conscientious thing that you were about to do, you just don't even do it. It'd be cool to be able to say to that voice, I'm God's child, so I'm giving this to my father. Let my father do with it what he wants. If he wants to bring an increase to what I'm doing, so be it. But I'm, I know I love him, so I'm giving it to my father. That's the power of identity. Or you could say, I'm not doing this to look good. I already have everything because I'm God's child. Why the heck would I need to do this to look good? Get out of here, Satan. And then you could proceed to do that conscientious thing. Or you could say, you know what? God has done so much for me in the past. Why not give this money to that old lady? Even if I were to go hungry, there's so many sunny days in the glory of God that I've spent. I'm not going to miss it because of one day of hunger. And proceed to do that conscientious thing. So you see why identity matters. If there were no Satan, then we could just grow naturally. But because of Satan, we have to know our position in the cosmos. We have to know that we are connected to God and we have to see ourselves as a part of the God continuum. So when Trotsville said that we identify with a group the group that we identify with is God. And it's nice when we meet our true brothers and sisters every once in a while, because when we get together, oh my God. So brothers and sisters, please don't forget, if you're a member of a blessed family, you literally come from the body of true mother and the seed of true father, literally. And God honors that. So don't fear, believe in yourself and believe in the voice of your conscience. If you like this, like, share, subscribe. Talk to you later.